Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Bike Life. Outside right now we have a foot of fresh powder here in Santa Fe and we have snow all day today and snow all night. Yes, America, it snows in New Mexico and yes, we are part of the United States. Sorry for the history lesson. What am I reading right now? Before we get to the Bike Life, I know this is a Bike Life film. I got a little bit of bike riding footage in early on just to set the tone, but this is gonna be a talking film. I'm reading Graham Nash's book which if you haven't read, it's called Wild Tales. It's awesome. So I actually met Graham Nash, David Crosby, and Rob Lowe all in the same night. Yes, very odd, very peculiar. David Crosby had the most badass black Ford Mustang, the old one, like the Steve McQueen bullet one. It's a long story. By the way, if you don't know about Graham Nash, not only the musician, but also a huge photography fan, he used to have a place called Nash Editions in LA, which was a printing service uh, with Mac Holbert. It was awesome. Anyway, bike life. I've got three things on the agenda. Two, I'm gonna tell you a story, and number one, I need your help. And let's start with number one. So here's what's happening to me. 2014, I get diagnosed with Lyme disease. For the next two and a half years, I am acutely sick. For the following two and a half years, I am mostly sick. Then I slowly start to come out of it. I figure I lost five, five and a half, almost six years of my life to this disease. I still have to pay attention to it. It comes and goes. There are very, very, very specific symptoms I feel from time to time, and it is very clear what it is. The goal with Lyme, it's a bacteria, not a virus, is to become asymptomatic. There is no known cure for Lyme, although plenty of people get it, get over, get beyond it. It depends on a variety of different things. But one of the things that's happened to me since then is when I push myself physically, I have a tendency of crashing after the fact. I don't mean physically crashing end over end, which I've done many times in my life, but I'm talking about physical crash where one second I'm fine and the next second I am not fine. That's really become part of my life post Lyme. So, when I get on my bicycle these days, my goal is 20 miles minimum. And I typically, a, a, a basic ride for me is 20 to 30 miles. And I can ride 30 miles hammering at, the, at my highest pace level, which for me is not fast. If you're a good bike rider, you would blow past me. But for me, 30 miles at a high pace, I can do that. And I can do it without drinking or eating anything which is not good. I've ride with people in the past who every 10 minutes, every 15 minutes, they are ingesting something. That is what I should be doing. So I drink what's called Scratch Labs. It's a, it's a electrolyte powder. I carry two bottles on the bike at all times, sometimes three, sometimes four, depending on the length of the ride. And the, the rule of thumb is a bottle an hour. I don't do that, but I force myself over the 30 mile ride, I will, which takes me about an hour and 30 minutes, hour and 40 minutes, I will drink an oversized one bottle of Scratch Labs. Fine and dandy. A couple hours after the ride, I feel okay. Five or six hours after the ride, I don't feel okay. I start to get so wildly foggy that I can barely function. And I think that this, this is a byproduct of not recovering from the ride. Because at 52, I have to recover from a ride. I'm not 22 anymore. So I bought something called CBD Recovery from Floyd's of Leadville. And Floyd of Leadville is the disgraced former Tour de France rider Floyd Landis. Now, if Floyd is disgraced, then every single rider of his generation, almost all, are also disgraced. It was the era of doping. I could care less. And by the way, disgraced Floyd Landis pulled off the single most incredible ride I've ever seen anyone on a bicycle ever do, which was stage 17 of the 2006 Tour, 
where he'd lost like 20 minutes the day before, everyone had written him off, and he did a solo 100 mile breakaway over three beyond category climbs and won, and then ended up winning the tour. I don't care what you're on. I don't care if you're on Pop Rocks and Jolt Cola, you are okay in my book. So anyway, I bought this CBD recovery drink and I'm hoping that this helps. If you have any beta for me in regards to how the hell do I recover better and is it, well, I think what I'm missing is the protein part of the equation. But anyway, that's point number one, help me. I need recovery. I figured I'd throw Floyd a bone, throw a little money his way. I love CBD if it's good. There's a ton of junk, meaningless CBD out there. I'm hoping his is good because it really works. And I realized that in the middle of Lyme disease when I first discovered CBD and I had 20 to one CBD paste, which I have been unable to find since then. It's like no one makes this stuff anymore. And if I could find it, it was great. I used it one time and I knew, holy cow, this stuff works. Okay, that was point number one. This is a long and rambling mess, by the way. Point number two, oh, it's about tires. So I am now running Conti Race Kings. 2.2, I have not had tires this wide on this bike since I bought it. This bike came with 225 Racing Ralphs by Schwalbe. And I flatted on those every single time I rode. Their racing tire got rid of them. I went to a Conti Tour tire that was a two inch tire, rode those for years. Then I went to 40 centimeter Schwalbe Marathon Plus Tours. I've been running those for years. Winter came and I thought, you know what? It's muddy, it's snowy, it's a little icy. I'll go to a wider tire. The Conti's and it doesn't matter what they are, Conti, Maxxis, whatever you wanna run, they are a blast. So I am now riding a lot more Jeep trail, improved trail, single track, but not mountain single track. I do not mountain bike. I much prefer to hike in the mountains than mountain bike. I like single track that's out here in sort of the high desert, high plains where it's rolling, short, punchy climbs, mile after mile, gravel roads, that kind of thing. The Schwalbe's have, not the Schwalbe's, the Condies have been so much fun because they are so stable. I think now you have a, a trend in cycling and I know because I've ridden with people who are always trying to err on the smallest tire possible. There's almost like a weird competition of like, I can do that on 25s, I can do that on 28s. And I'm like, you could, you're gonna crash and you're probably gonna be miserable and you're gonna slow everyone up, but you could technically do that on 28s. But even running 40s out here, it's so dry and at the bottom of every wash, you're gonna hit a, a section of deep sand. And even with 40s, you had to either blow through and hope for the best or slow, go super slow and like unclip and try to get through it. With the two twos, it is a blast. They are incredibly slow on the highway, of course. Um, I think my front Conti is not round. I think I got one that's kind of faulty because there's a definite bounce on the highway and I have seated it and unseated it three times, four times. I've tried different tubes, I've tried everything. I can't get it round. It's not that big of a deal and when I'm off-road, you know, I don't know. 100%, these tires have about 400 miles on them so far. They don't wear like the Schwalbe Tour tires. I don't expect them to. I, I'm guessing I'll get maybe 1500 miles out of these uh, before I have to replace them. Totally worth it. I'm not running tubeless. I'm running regular, a slime tube in the back and a regular tube in the front, but I did buy two tubalitos that I'm going to put in at some point when these tubes blow out. Okay, finally, the most important part of this entire film, I want you to look at this. This is my, for the last five years, this has been my cycling bib. The only one I own, the only cycling kit I have is right here, and it's a Voler, V-O-L-E-R, I'm not sponsored by them, I have nothing to do with them. This was purchased for me as a gift about five years ago. And as you can see, it is completely rotted out. Like you could actually see through the back of this. It's so rotted. And someone was riding with me and they said, you know, I can kind of see your ass through your, through your bib. And I was like, you know, maybe I should replace that. So I didn't really know much about Voler. And so I was like, you know what? If this lasted thousands of rides with me sweating through it, and then instead of washing it, I would leave it in the sun in New Mexico because here it'll dry in 15 minutes and we're trying to conserve water always. And so I know that might be disgusting, but I don't really care. So I was like, whatever lasted that long, I'm gonna buy. And so I went out and I spent a fortune on Voler. It's the most expensive clothing I own is now this new kit I'm gonna show you. I don't care, it's worth it. I now have now one cycling outfit, which I'm gonna show you. I don't have a ton of these. I'm not gonna have 15 in the, in the washroom. And I, I can just get by with the, with the basic minimum. But when I looked at the prices on Voler and I looked at my five-year-old bib, I said, that's called money well spent. That is, I, would, I can go to Walmart or I can go to a discount store and I can get something cheap. And in three months, I throw it away. It was probably built in horrible conditions and it's not the way I wanna do business in my life. So 
A friend of mine bought a down coat at a discount store at the beginning of this winter. Bought it, actually bought it about three months ago. And I saw it the other day and it looked like a fringe jacket, but it wasn't supposed to be a fringe jacket. All of the stitching had come out and it was hanging down off his arms. And he was like, I only spent $19 for this. And I was like, yeah, and you're gonna, th and he goes, I might be able to make it through the season with this. And I thought, okay, so this is probably made in some horrible factory somewhere. The quality of the ingredients are terrible and it's falling apart and it's gonna end up in the landfill and you think that's a good idea. So I try to buy things that last. I wanna buy a piece of clothing that lasts for years. And when you're talking about cycling kit, it is not easy wear on this stuff. So, okay, so what did I get? I replaced my old bib with a new bib. And Voller has gotten super fancy. And these are, this is like, and let me just give you a little, a little taste of reality here. I have, I have friends that fall into different categories. I know plenty of people, men, who would balk at wearing something like this, like cycling kit, spandex, lycra, whatever you wanna call it, whatever this is made out of. And they would go, I would never wear that. I would never get caught dead in that. Historically, the people I know that say that are not people I ever wanna hang out with. Because if your masculinity is so fragile that this would destroy it, you've got way bigger problems. Anyone who's on a bike for three hours or more straight will know the benefit of something like this. Anyone who rides in a windy area will know the benefit. Anyone who rides with uh, having to sit on the saddle for long periods of time will know the benefit of a bib like this. And a bib is great because it goes over your shoulders and it keeps your shorts from riding up and down. Um, I always used to wear, wear just regular bike shorts, but I went to a bib five years ago and I'm never going back. So this is fantastic. It's super lightweight, very comfortable, and made very well. Now I have a standard cycling short sleeve shirt that goes with it, but what I love about Voller is they have these, the back pockets are really good and really accessible. Some cycling jerseys, the pockets are so tight you can't access them. These are really nice, and they also, one of the side pockets, or back pockets has a little zippered side thing to it for your keys, for your credit cards, or for your potent marijuana. I don't know, what state do you live in? You could put anything in there. You could put the launch codes in there for all I know. Okay, so I have the bib, the regular cycling short sleeve jersey, and then I got the thermal jacket. And it's actually, yes, a fitted thermal jacket, which also looks super cool. And I got everything blue because my bike frame is dark blue. And I was like, if I don't match, it's gonna be a crisis. Everything has to match, right? Remember, it's not, it's not how you, don't be a schnook. It's not how you feel, it's how you look. So again, super form fitting, very warm, great pockets, also has the zipper on the back. So I got that. And then over the top, I got the Voller Wind Jacket, which is really nice as well. I went with the forest green camo in case I wanna hide while I'm out there. Again, these things, incredibly lightweight. This folds up into itself, into an inside pocket, and it's tiny, lightweight, doesn't weigh anything. All this system works together. So before we got the foot of fresh snow, I went out the day before, and I, it was probably 30-something, and I rode in this kit and was toasty and comfortable, and it was awesome. And so that is the kit I went with. I did spend a lot of money. It's the most expensive clothing I have, and it is worth every penny because cycling is a big part of my life. I try to do it every day. This clothing, I know based on my rotted out bib, how long it lasts and uh, I'm happy. So let's recap. Point number one, help me with my recovery because I don't know what I'm doing. Point number two, my Connie Race Kings 2-2. If you haven't run a wide tire in a long time, it is a blast. Yes, I'm not gonna go do road rides. I'm not gonna go do a century on the tarmac with my Contis on there, but for everything else, it's great, a lot of fun. I think I'll switch them up next time. I don't know if I'll go back to a Conti. I may try the Maxis icons or something. Anyway, and then Voler. If you don't know about Voler, again, I have no affiliation with them. Never spoken to them, probably never will, but their stuff lasts and it is worth, in my experience, worth every penny. That's Bike Life and I will be back, hopefully with another episode at some point. Good luck.